how is the United Nations as an, as a, as an institution and UNDP specifically sort of positioned and structured to, to now support what, what is an evolving uh, nexus. I think uh, UNDP Administrator Helen Clark called it emergency development. Yeah, well, there are a couple of things. Um, well, first, I think we need to make sure that development organizations and then also the governments uh, make sure that um, development organizations are supported when it comes to prevention, risk reduction and preparedness. You know, I mean, again, uh, the situation is very clear. You know, today the average length of um, conflict is seven years. The conflict don't end. So, you know, if we are simply just handing out life-saving uh, humanitarian assistance, you would have to do that for seven years or, or more. So why don't we try and, and invest more so that the communities and local uh, societies have a better coping mechanisms. For UNDP, very concretely, um, I think we can do, and then we know we can do much, much more in t basically two areas. One is the livelihood, um, and the other one, um, the second area is um, basic service delivery capacity, supporting the local um, authorities' uh, basic service delivery capacity. On the livelihood, um, again, you know, if people have a choice between becoming dependent on life-saving humanitarian assistance or if they can actually have employment and then, you know, earn their income, um, they would definitely choose the latter. Um, so we would like to do much more and we know we can do much more. We are already doing quite a lot, especially in the context of, um, you know, immediate sort of post-disaster context, you know, in Ecuador or a year ago in, in the context of Nepal, we did quite a lot of, um, you know, emergency employment uh, creation, generation activities. Um, the basic service delivery capacity, um, you know, it could be the local basic infrastructures like water, you know, sanitation or, or schools or clinics. Uh, but in conflict uh, situations, it could be about keeping the civil servants on the payroll and therefore the local administration's basic service delivery will, will not completely collapse. In Central African Republic, we kept the local policemen on payroll so that they would not disappear from the street. So there are, you know, wide-ranging interesting things that, again, development organizations can do uh, in the areas of sustaining or preventing the collapse of um, basic service delivery of local uh, communities. And the, the private sector, uh, as I understand it, um, you know, has the capacity and capability to help. They don't just want to, to give money. They want to bring their expertise and acumen to the, to the problem, to addressing the problem. Um, so what is, that, what is that business case for the private sector to get to get engaged uh, in, in these types of very uh, difficult and complex uh, humanitarian situations. Right. You know, in the, in the context of protracted uh, displacement situations, you know, it doesn't make any sense. And then, you know, given the fact that um, average number of years people spend in displacement is now more than 17 years. So it doesn't make any sense for these people to actually live dependent on humanitarian assistance. So one of the new themes in those protracted displacement is more education opportunities or, you know, for all refugee kids, but also uh, employment opportunities for refugees and local host um, uh, community population. So it's the, you know, we are looking to business uh, partners to come in and, and actually offer interesting ideas. I mean, in certain contexts uh, of protracted displacement, um, some people, including a government, the host government, is you know, looking into possibly having special economic zones. If we can invite business to invest using you know, skilled labour from both you know, refugee population but also the local um, population, um, then we might potentially really create a win-win situation.